All right, welcome back to, I guess, our our redo of the Corsair software for the IQ Nexus. We're just doing a quick recap of the programming of the Nexus because our audio quality was rather poorly mixed in the original video. So when you load up the software, uh, this is what the screen looks like. It shows you your light towers, and then over here, your Nexus. We'll start with uh, the LT100 light towers. We have lighting setup, which allows you to move your towers around wherever you kind of prefer. I have them like this, tower one over there, tower four on the right, tower two here, tower two there. So I have them going across right to left, uh, physically in my, in my room. Lighting effects. Just shows you what you currently have. Hardware lighting, you've got some presets that you can pick from. Color pulse, color set, and lots of different things here that you can pick from. Kind of cool. I kind of like the uh, rainbow wave right now. You can adjust the speed, fast, slow. I'll leave it at medium. Direction, up or down. I'll leave it the way it is. Uh, and then we can jump over to our IQ Nexus. And there's the virtual representation of the actual physical touch screen. Uh, I have 15 screens that I've already programmed and I can click them just to have a look at them. And I can edit any of these that, that I want. Just go up and click the pencil and we can edit or if I don't like it, I can trash it. If I uh, want to make a new one, I just click the uh, plus arrow, uh, plus button there. And it starts with, okay, what do you want to call your screen? So I'll just call this one a test screen for now. And I can change the color of it. So I might want to change to uh, like a lime green, create it, and there it is. If, uh, again, you don't like it, you go to the pencil, click the pencil, you can go back in and change it again. I'm going to slide this back down to, the black, I like black because it gives me good contrast uh, with uh, white uh, icons or white writing so I can see them quickly and find them and then touch them on the touch screen. So I'll leave that like that. So I've got test, but there's nothing in the button. Oh, okay. So let's click the button again and we can go and see what we want to do. Is this going to be an actual button that I touch screen and press? Or is it going to be some kind of preset function, which they call widgets? Well, I'll start with buttons. So I'll go to the next line, assignment. What can I do? Add new. I can add a new macro or some text. Media, like play, pause, volume controls. Or I can launch apps. Uh, there's also profile switching, screen switching, and remapping your keyboard and mouse, but uh, I don't use those right now. That might be something for the future, but right now I have no need to do that. So let's set up uh, a macro first. So we'll click on macro. If we get this big box on the right, right click it, add new event. It's going to be a keyboard event. Uh, it could be another event like a mouse event, but we'll stick with keyboard, keystroke, click text field to add key. So I'll click that. And what am I going to use as a macro? I think I will use a Windows macro. I'll do the settings. The settings macro is you press the Windows logo on your keyboard and the letter I. So I'll do that now. Win and I. You can see it opens up the settings. I'm going to close that now. And that's my macro. I will now add it. It's now added in. I can now add a button name. If I look at what I've got right now, I've got a little icon and it says button name. Well, I don't want it to say button name. I want it to say settings. I can change the font of what it says and I can change the size. Small, extra small, medium, large, extra large. If I don't want it to say anything, I can just click that off but I'll put it back on for now. I'll just skip by background just for a second. Let's go to the icon. Again, if I, if I want to remove the icon, I can. I can just click it off. But if I want to leave it there, I can change the color of it. 
if I wanted to do that. And of course, I can change the size. So I've just made a, a, a button for a button macro for settings. So let's say I want to do another uh, something else. Well, let's go here and click on that. And this time we will make a text. Okay, so under the where it says button name, we'll just type in some text. There we go. And again, I can change the font of that. I'll just pick something nice and bold and I'll make it big. The program tries to guess what icon you might want to use. I'm going to say no icon this time and just leave it like that. Okay, so we've just made two buttons, one for a macro, one for text. If I go now and click the next button, assign it, let's make a, a, a media. So what do we want? We can have play, pause, stop, previous track, next track, volume up, volume down, mute. So that's kind of cool. Let's do a mute button. So it knows the mute button. That's not bad. Uh, I don't think I have to name it because I know what that icon is. So I'll click off the name. And under the icon, let's change the color to, let's make it purple. And I'll make this button large because my eyesight's not so great. So I like nice large icons. So there we go. Now if I uh, press that uh, on my actual touch screen, it will mute the sound in Windows. Okay, what's left? Let's go to the next button. We have assignment. We go to launch app. Okay, so I can select an application to launch, or I can do something from the web browser. I can launch my email, text editor, a calculator, or file explorer, and there are some other options within some of these. I'm just going to pick an application to launch. So click that. Now it takes you to your uh, program files. I'm going to go to, there's Crew Chief. There's the executable file, double click that, puts it right in there, uh, even adds the crew chief flow, uh, icon, which is nice. So therefore I don't really need to have a, a button name. So I'll just click that off. For my icon, I'll leave it the way it is. It's just that I'll make it lar extra large again. So now when I uh, press this on my touch screen, it's going to launch the crew chief app. So you can do that with a lot of apps. You can load up uh, like launching OBS or DaVinci Resolve, or you can launch uh, any of your other any of your other apps you're using. I can, I use it to launch iRacing and Crew Chief and uh, Voice Attack, all kinds of things. Okay, what about the next button we're going to make? Well, we've we've done all these assignments that we want to do: macros, text, media, and launching apps. What about widgets? Let's click on widgets. Widgets are like presets. And if I click the little plus sign, I get something about system information. So I've, it's going to have information about my NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 processor, like fans and temperatures, or the uh, my AMD Ryzen 9, the load on the computer, etc. The Alienware information about the actual, the actual um, computer or a clock. I'll I'll pick clock for the moment and you can see it loads a clock and you can have the colon blinking or not blinking. You can make it 12 hours or 24 hours. Again you can change the font of what you see and you can change the size. That's pretty cool. If you want the date to show up you can click that and get the date on it as well. So that's kind of cool. Let's say I want another widget and I want to know what's going on in my computer. So let's say I want to know what the load is, the current load that the computer is experiencing. So I'll click that, it loads it right up. So load, it tells you there, six, seven percent. It gives you a little graphical display. Down here, you can rename it if you want. If you don't want the graph, you can turn it off and it just tells you the percent that way. But the graph is kind of cool to look at. You can adjust the brightness of the graph, which is kind of cool. You can uh, change the text here uh, with the font and the size. Uh, so that's, that's kind of fun. So you can fiddle around. There's all kinds of things you can do to kind of make it look the way you want to do. So we've just made uh, a screen that has six buttons on it. So that's, that's pretty cool. 
okay, I don't want this, so I'm going to trash it. And I'm going to go back to adding a new screen, plus button. I'm just going to leave it black for now. There it is. And what I'm going to do is click on the button, and under beside the type here, if I scroll over to the right side of it, it's got some numbers. And this, this will allow you to increase the size of the button that you're making. I can also drag the edges of the button to make it whatever size I want. Now, one of the things I haven't shown you yet is the thing that says background. So you can download some pre-made backgrounds from the community and have them uh, in your documents file. And then you can load up some of these. So I'm going to load up one right now. Okay, so I've just loaded a background, and this has kind of got like some little fiery flame ashes floating around. So it's kind of cool. Now I can uh, enlarge it or make it smaller, uh, but better just to leave it, I think, at the 100% mark. And this is an animated GIF file. Now, you can make your own GIFs or animated GIFs or uh, PNGs or JPEGs and use them all as backgrounds. It's just that you have to follow a certain size rule. So if I click done, there we go. And now it says button name, what do I, what do I want to call this? Maybe I just want to make this uh, some text with uh, the name of my uh, racing team. So JH Racing. Okay, I'm gonna change the font. There's a font in here I like for this, which is right here. And I'm going to change it to extra large. I'm going to get rid of that icon. And there I've made a, a nice little background screen with some text in it. And uh, I can use that uh, as, a, as, a, as a home screen if I like. So it's it's a kind of it's a kind of cool thing to do to add these these uh, screens. So I'm just going to go over here to library, click on the hamburger icon. I can see all of my screens. So maybe if I want to keep this one, maybe I want to keep it. Maybe I want to put it number two. Oop, drag and drop it. There we go. So I put it in position two. So if, as I scroll through my screens. I can, I'll see them all, and I see that's in position number two. When I'm actually swiping on the touch screen, it'll come up as after the first swipe. So there you go. That's using backgrounds. So that's a, a quick look at using the uh, IQ Nexus software. It is very easy to use. It's a lot of fun to use. You can be really creative, make lots of uh, neat screens. And you can program almost anything. Just remember when you're doing macros, uh, you have to be in the program that has a keyboard or mouse macro already set up. So if I want to do a, a, an iRacing macro, like for example, my black box, lap timing, standings, relative, etc., I have to be in iRacing when I make that macro because those keyboard strokes. They're in iRacing, so it picks them up out of the program that you're in. If you have any questions, you can go up to the little the Corsair icon here. There's support, forums, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, and the Corsair website you can go to if you need help or more information. Thanks for watching. See you later.